If you can see it in your mind, if you can believe it in your heart, if you have the courage to speak it, if you have the courage to own it and the desire to work for it, you can bring it into your reality. There's nothing off limits. There are no limitations. There are no limitations to those who believe and those who are willing to work for their dream. You have to see it in your mind before you can see it in your reality. You have to be a visionary. Picture everything you want so clearly in your mind until you can see it right in front of you. Write it all down on a piece of paper. Create a vision board. Then you will have evidence in the future. Evidence of the amazing power of your mind. The amazing power of you. If all you ever do is live by what is in front of you, reacting to the life in front of you, you will never move beyond the life that is in front of you. You have to be able to see outside of your current situation. You must be able to acknowledge where you are in life, but know you are capable of creating so much more. Know that where you are right now is not your life. You are where you are right now because of your past decisions and your past beliefs. Now, it's time to sum up the courage to ask for better, to believe in better, to believe magic is on the way. Now, it's time to get what you deserve. In life, we don't get what we ask for. We get what we ask and work for. Nothing in life will work without the work. No books, no seminars, no audio tapes, no gurus, nothing. Nothing will work if you don't. But I'm not talking about doing work you hate. There's no need for that. When you do work you love, it's not work. You do need to do something, but you do it because you love doing it, not because you have to. And that's where the magic is created. You add value to others by doing what you want to do, and you get rewarded. What you want is not going to come to you by just dreaming about it. When you get in your car to go somewhere, you would never expect to arrive at the destination by just closing your eyes and dreaming about it. You know you can't get there instantly. You must know where you're going, but you also understand that right now you are here. And in order to get to your destination, there is going to be a journey. There might be roadblocks, detours, stop signs, even breakdowns. But if you really must get to that destination, you can and will find a way. You would never stop halfway and turn around because of a detour, a setback, or an obstacle. You just take whatever path leads to your destination, even if it wasn't the path you planned on taking, even if it wasn't the easiest path. Life is no different. If you want something, anything in your life, you must first know where you are, and then you must know what it is going to take to get there. You make a commitment that no matter what happens, I will reach that destination. If I have to go the long way, I'll go the long way. If I have to learn a new way, I'll learn a new way. If there are detours, roadblocks, or breakdowns, I will keep going, fix the issue, get patched up, but I will never quit. If you just know, if you just believe, you will get there and you have the courage to see it through. There is nothing you can't have, nowhere you can't go, and no one you can't become. Muhammad Ali said, the man who has no imagination has no wings. If you can't envision it, if you can't believe it, you will never see it. You will never be it. You see, if you want to live an average life, that is fine. Keep your feet on the ground. But if you want to soar, if you want to achieve great things, you must not only think those crazy thoughts, but feel it. Feel what it would feel like to be doing that thing you want to do. Feel what it feels like to have all the things you want, to be the person that has achieved the things you want to achieve. The very process of you feeling like you already have it will send vibrational signals to your brain. And if you are willing to work for it, it will be in your life very soon. Albert Einstein once said, your imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. 
Only those who believe anything is possible can achieve the things most would consider impossible. You must know who you are going to be before you become that person. You must picture what you want to achieve and feel like you already have it before you can bring it into your reality. In the greatest book of all time, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill states, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. He says, you are the master of your destiny. You can influence, direct, and control your own environment. You can make your life what you want it to be. It's not a magic trick. It's not a new philosophy. Most of you know about it. And if you don't, you should start paying attention because just about anyone who is great knows about it. As Robin Sharma said, everything is created twice, first in the mind and then in reality. There is an energy and power far greater than we can comprehend at play. And we can either use it, live in harmony with it, create with it, or run in fear from it. Well, my dad had gone to a Toastmasters early on and heard one of the most successful magazine entrepreneurs in the world speak. He comes back and tells me, I just had a chance to hear one of the most successful magazine entrepreneurs in the world speak. And he said, when are you taking your SAT? I said, I'm taking it next year. He said, well, this guy was failing out of high school. He was struggling. He was raised by a single mom in the Midwest, but he promised his mother he would take a test called the SAT. So he takes the SAT in May, his junior year, doesn't expect anything. Now the SAT, which I don't know how many your population know, but it's, it's a standardized test with a math part and a verbal part. Both are scored out of 800 points. Well, this guy takes it, he's, he's bombing, he's failing out of school, he doesn't expect anything as he's telling the story at Toastmasters. Well, he gets a 1480 out of 1600. So he's stunned, right? That would be for the smart That's people that listen to your podcast. Insane, yeah. Right, cognitive dissonance. Right? I got a like, nine hundred on my SATs just right. to give people a frame. Right, and I got a, a ten ninety. Excuse me. And I got a ten ten. Right, I was just hey four digits, and it, you you know it's a variety of different things. So he gets the score, and his mother, doing what any mother would do, knowing her kid, says, "Did you cheat?" Right, she knows her son, and he says, "I swear to God, I tried to cheat, but the way the numbers were and the scantrons and the bubbles, you couldn't cheat." So she says, "You mean to tell me you really got that score?" He said, yeah, I got the score. So he's stunned, Tom. So as my dad's telling me the story, I'm like, okay. So he says, all right. So what he decides is because he realizes he's smart and he's going into his senior year, he says, I'm gonna go to class. Now he starts to go to class. He doesn't hang out with who he did when he didn't go to class. All right, teachers see him in class and they said, hey, maybe Franklin Pierce, maybe we missed the boat on this kid. So they start to treat him differently. Well, as the guy would tell the story, he graduates, goes to a community college, goes on to Wichita State, goes on to the Ivy League, and becomes this massively successful magazine entrepreneur. So I said, okay, well, the guy was always smart. He just needed a standardized test to unlock it. My dad said, no, that's not the story. This is what I want you to understand. He said, 12 years after all this guy's success, he gets a letter in the mail from Princeton, New Jersey. Doesn't think anything about it. The next day, his wife says, you're gonna open it. He opens it. True story, turns out the SAT board will periodically review their test taking procedures and the policies. The year he took the test, he was one of 13 people sent the wrong SAT score. His actual score was a 740 out of 1600. <laughs> and he said, people think my whole life changed when I got the 1480. But what happened? My whole life changed when I started acting like a 1480. And what does a 1480 do? He goes to class. Well, this is one of the first stories I would share when I had my opportunity at Alabama or Florida State or Georgia. So A, your language is powerful, but number two, your behavior is way ahead of your success. And so many people let their feelings dictate what they do as opposed to throw your behavior out there. Russell Wilson's 5'10". He shouldn't be playing pro football, but he behaves like the best quarterback in the country. And he's done that since before he was at that level and then his feelings and emotions and his skill caught up to that behavior. I think the lesson my dad was trying to teach me um, ultimately was in addition to my language, what I do, not how I feel about my past is gonna determine who I am in the future. We 
are all in the gutter. But some of us are looking at the stars. What does this famous quote by Oscar Wilde actually mean? How do you interpret his words? What meaning do you give these words? We are all in the gutter. But some of us are looking at the stars. Our interpretation. We all have our own challenges and issues unique to us. No one goes through life without challenges. The difference in the quality of life we live is how we respond to those challenges and what meaning we give them. Some of us choose to see only the gutter, the pain, the problems, the struggle. However, some choose to look at the stars, to dream of better, to believe there is better, to focus on the positive and work toward making something magical of this life. Your life is what you make it. You can be happy with little or miserable with much. You can make a lot from a little or lose everything from having a lot. Everything comes down to you. How you decide to live each day, what meaning you give to each challenge, what actions you decide to take each moment of each day. Some choose to throw in the town. They say they will never make it because this happened and because that person did this to me. They frequently blame others for their misfortune and constantly play the luck card. On the flip side, some who face massive challenges and big life issues choose to react differently. They will rise early knowing that every day is a new day and a new opportunity. Knowing that no yesterday has control over how you react today. Knowing that today and right now, you can take the first step towards turning your life into something far greater than you ever imagined. So take a step forward today, no matter how small, and then another step tomorrow, and another the next day, and always ensure you are moving forward. Always ensure you are looking at the stars, keeping your goals and dreams in the forefront of your mind, remaining alert to opportunities, seeking opportunities to move forward, and capitalizing when they arrive. Next time you're in a challenging moment, know that you can remain there. Play the victim role as most do. Give up as most do. Use the event as a reason why you didn't make it also as most do. Or you can do what the minority do which is decide you are greater than any challenge and it is never about how great the challenge is in your life. See, you will only ever be defined by how you react to your challenging moments. So stay strong, remain hungry, and always be looking up at the stars. There's an African proverb that reads, When there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. When you refuse to allow any doubts in your own mind, then no doubts from others will ever cloud your judgment. When you create a strong mind, there can be no other that will defeat you with their words or with their judgments. When you believe in you, you need no other to believe in you. Because others really have no say in who you will become. Only you have that say 
Only you can decide if others' opinions become reality or you create your own fate. The greatest challenge and the greatest obstacle any human will face is their own doubts, their own fears, and their own conditioned thoughts. If you want to live your dream, you will have to fight for it. You will have to fight the greatest battles of your life. You will have to battle the external enemy. People who don't believe in you. People who do you wrong. People who put you down. You will have to battle the intimate enemy. Those close to you who might do you wrong, or maybe you assume don't believe in you. Those who want the best for you, but their idea of support is to remind you of what can't be done or shouldn't be attempted. But the worst of all is the internal enemy. You will have to battle what seems like an army in your own head, an army of doubt, Fear of failure, fear of judgment, lack of belief. The voices inside the head saying, I am not good enough. I'm not worthy. I want to do this, but I can't. I want to give to those I love, but I can't. I'm not worthy of love. I'll never be able to do this. I am hopeless. I've tried everything. The world is against me. No one believes in me. My life's not worth it living. There is no greater pain that can be inflicted on you than your own internal enemy. Your own thoughts will cause you more pain than anyone or anything. They can be likened to a terrorist living in your soul. But when you learn to control and direct your mind, you can direct that internal voice to work for you rather than against you. You get it to work for you by creating a compelling future. A future you will be proud to achieve, proud to live through. You do this by not just having goals, but having meaningful goals. Goals that get you excited to wake up every morning. You do this by understanding what your purpose in life really is. What are you doing it all for? When you know these things, when you work on yourself daily, you can quiet that voice in your head. You can feel good enough because you are good enough. But it does take a commitment, a commitment of daily practice to work on yourself. Cut out something that you spend a lot of time on that does nothing good for your life and replace it with daily work on you. Empower yourself. Set your life up to win. Well, if somebody says something out loud, it's 10 times more powerful than if they think it. And then as we started to study the data, particularly data that was just reinforced by Christine Porath from Georgetown and Harvard, that negativity is a multiple of four to seven times more powerful than positivity. So think about that. If I say something out loud, it's 10x. If it's negative, it's four to seven times more powerful. So when I say negative things out loud, it's 40 to 70 times more likely that that will happen or cause a result that won't be good for me than if I just didn't say anything. So as we were going into our second year at Alabama, we made a bet. What if we could just get our players to not say stupid things out loud? What if we could just do that? Not teach any element of positive thinking but eliminate conversations about the heat, complaining about coaches, complaining about circumstances, complaining about situations, verbalizing negativity. But we weren't gonna lie to them and say, hey, be positive. 
we just taught them the data. And then what we did was some of the things that you, you noticed in the book, the stories in and around negativity are incredible. Tell us some, um, Bill Buckner was one that took my breath away. So, so Billy Buckner, who just passed away recently, was uh, an incredible an eight-time gold glove, a great baseball player for the Boston Red Sox. Well, he made a mistake in sports that would be one of the biggest sport bloopers in history. And in 1986, he let the game-winning run score on a ground ball through his legs that ultimately would give the Mets the World Series. Mm -hmm. Now, I was just watching an ESPN E60 Jeremy Schapp story and I saw an interview that was done in 1990 that resurfaced in 1995 where Buckner was interviewed 12 days before the World Series and he said, you know, the dreams are to win, you know, to win the World Series and the nightmare would be for me to let the game winning run score on a ground ball through my legs. You know, and then ultimately that's exactly what would happen. Now, by saying that out loud, what did he do? He didn't make it happen, but he increased the probability. And this is what I want people to understand. Your internal thoughts are all over the place. Do you think that he makes it more likely because it's going to subtly influence his behavior or because you're talking to some magical deity that then says, well, you said it, and so I'm gonna make it happen? I think that what he did is a subconscious plant. By verbalizing it and knowing that it's 10 times more powerful, he's planting it in his subconscious. He's not, he doesn't want it to happen but it becomes something that's ultimately on his mind and he gave it more power by verbalizing. Never allow people who gave up on their dreams convince you to give up on yours. I won't be led astray by the opinions of others, by those who were too scared to go after their dreams, those who lacked the courage to fight for their dream. It's not only your enemies and haters that will discourage you, but your own family and friends too. Your parents almost always want what's best for you. They talk you out of your dream because they don't want you to get hurt. They're conditioned to keep you from being hurt, going right back to when you were a baby. You are not a baby anymore. You're a man. You're a woman. You're strong. You're your own person with your own opinions. You are in charge of your life. You are in charge of your own decisions. You are capable of making your own choices. And you are strong enough to handle the consequences if it doesn't work out. You are big enough to handle any challenge that comes based on the decisions you make on your own. You call it truth, I call it opinion. If I want an average, I would ask for their opinion. Please, don't get me wrong. I'm sure average is great, but average is not something I'm seeking right now. So best of luck and move along. Your truth is not my reality. Your opinion will never sway my dreams. My dreams will never be your success story. And don't expect me to say sorry, because I will never apologize for chasing my dreams, for having higher standards, for saying no when I need to, for doing everything I must do. Opinions are the cheapest commodity on earth just like a cheap, nasty hamburger. Everyone can have one, but it's best you don't digest. But I don't digest BS. See, there's a better food for your soul, and it's not found in others' opinions. It's found in your own inner voice. It's the courage inside you, the courage that has no fear of failure, no fear of opinions. It's found in following your heart. Not what's best for your mom or dad. Not what society says is good or bad. Not what makes you look important, but what you want. Critics, doubters, haters, naysayers. They will all discourage you because they are threatened by your success. They believe that if you become successful, they will be less significant. If you become successful, they will be left behind by you becoming more, they will become less. By you doing something with your life, it highlights the fact they have it. It's a small mind mentality, insecurity, 
Are you going to let insecure individuals bring you down to their level? Everyone has an opinion. Usually those with a lack of skill have a louder opinion than those with talent. They say the hardest prison to escape is your own mind. Very often, that is so true. Mostly because our minds are exploding with the opinions of others. Trying to fit into this world, trying to live up to others' expectations, comparing ourselves to others, mistaking opinions for the truth. Escape that prison and live free. Live like a king and answer only to yourself. So many people never go for what they want because of the fear of others' opinions. Because of the fear of the word no. Because of haters and naysayers. That will never be me. I refuse to listen to the voices that will never understand my dream. I refuse to listen to the opinions of those who have never and will probably never achieve anything meaningful in their own life. I know my purpose. I know my destiny. And outside voices are just meaningless distractions. I will not be swayed by the opinions of others. I will not be distracted by their opinions. I have my blinkers on and I will not stop until I realize my true purpose. Until my dream is my reality. There's only one voice you must listen to. Deep down, you know which voice that is. I don't care how scared you are. What you need to do is make bold decisions. Right now, you've got to begin training yourself to act. You've got to begin training yourself to take chances, to put yourself at risk, to risk embarrassment, to know that you're going to fail. That's the only way that you're ever going to get the things that you want out of life. All of us want to do something extraordinary. All of us want to be great. All of us have something inside ourselves that if we knew we couldn't fail, we would pursue that. And that question, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? That question is one of the most important questions that you can ever ask yourself. And the reality is you can do that thing. But you're going to have to be bold. You're going to have to take chances. You're going to have to put everything at risk. And the problem is, the reason that people play things so safe is because it's so comfortable there. It's so easy there. And every day passes by without you noticing that terrifying passage of time. But once you realize that this is it, this is the one shot that you have, and what does it really matter if you fail? What does it really matter what other people think? The only thing that really matters is what do you think about yourself? And let me tell you right now, that Self-belief is going to be built of knowing that you're willing to try. It isn't going to be built on whether or not you succeed. It's going to be built on whether or not you try, whether or not you show up in that moment. That thing that you've rehearsed in your head a thousand times where you hope you will be courageous. Be courageous. Know that about yourself. Know that every moment is that moment. Sometimes it's so small, it seems imperceptible. It seems like it's not a moment for courage. But every moment is a moment for courage. Every moment right now is your chance to act, to strike, to be bold, to do the thing that you're afraid you won't be able to do, but to do the thing that you know could lead you where you want to go, to do the thing that you would do if you knew you couldn't fail. But courage is doing it, even though you might fail. So be courageous. Be bold. Strike now.